Hello there you guys, welcome to one of my live videos and on this uh, video uh, tonight I am going to be giving you an update um, on some more uh, transfer uh, news you know keeping you um, up to date um, of what players are linked uh, with Manchester United and like I updated you earlier on uh, today uh, Solskjaer um, insists we will delve into the current transfer market for short term deals reflecting on the injury to uh, Marcus Rashford because reports are now emerging out saying that Marcus Rashford could be out for at least six weeks or some reports have actually you know, said he could be out uh, until um, April. So this actual uh, back injury Marcus Rashford has got, it's uh, actually you know, very uh, severe because it did confirm that Rashford has sustained a double stress fracture on his back. So I'm very, very um, disappointed um, about this. And like I said, you know, Rashford's been one of our best players this season. You know, his performances have been very, very good. And he's been in scintillating form. And Rashford has scored 19 goals for Manchester United in all competitions so far this season. And he has scored 63 senior goals for the football club since he broke into the senior squad back in 2016. And, you know, so far until this point, he has spent the entirety of his career with Manchester United. But Rashford has sustained quite a few injuries as a Man United player. You know, he was injured early on in the season. He was also injured uh, towards uh, the end um, of last season. So he sustained quite a few injuries. Uh, and he's um, only at uh, the age um, of 22. But I think a lot of aspects of his game have improved. But, you know, now reflecting on the injury uh, to Marcus Rashford... Man United are in search uh, for um, a striker. Obviously, you know, we need to strengthen up in that midfield because that midfield is one of the priori priority areas where Man United need to strengthen up. But, you know, signings are definitely nowhere needed um, at the football club. Uh, so, reports have been emerging out uh, today. Um, it's also, you know, stem stemmed from Sky Sports, which is, um, is a very uh, reliable source. And they say, you know, Man United are in for Edison Cavani from PSG. It also says a few other teams are in for him. It says, you know, Chelsea have showed an interest. Uh, Frank Lampard's give his overarching view on Edison Cavani. And, you know, he insists he's a great uh, player. I think Chelsea are also considering making short-term deals themselves in this January transfer window. This is what, you know, Frank Lampard uh, wants her to do. Um, obviously, it says that Atletico Madrid are emerged, to the, emerged as the favourites to sign Edison uh, Cavani. Um, I think also Tottenham have been in for him. But it's being confirmed uh, today that uh, the PSG director uh, has said that Edison Cavani has put in a transfer request at PSG. So he does uh, want to uh, leave uh, PSG uh, this month. Uh, Edison Cavani is 32 years of age. Um, I think now he's currently into his seventh season with PSG. This is his seventh season with PSG. And in total, he has made um, 292 appearances in all competitions. And he scored 198 goals. So he's obviously, you know, PSG's record goal scorer. You know, PSG paid around £55 million for him from Napoli back in 2013. And I think his current uh, contract is due to expire at the end of the season. So reflecting on that, you know, he would probably now get Edison Cavani for a reasonable figure. I think PSG... G do want in the region of around uh, £25 million for him. But like I said on my recent videos, you know, I think we need to add more inspiration in that attack of uh, the um, the pitch, you know. But we need the striker um, anywhere. Um, I know the likes of Martial's done okay this season. I think Martial has been totally comparison to Rashford because I think overall Marcus Rashford's a better player than him. But I think in the games Martial's played in this season, he's still done really, really well. But he's actually you now had a few injuries this season. Oh, obviously, you know, not too long ago, Anthony Martial uh, was ill. Obviously, you know, like I said on my match reaction to Liverpool Man United game, Daniel James has not really played well in the last month or so, but I think for the vast majority of this season, Daniel James has done really, really well. And he's been basically replicating what he uh, did uh, do uh, with Swansea because we paid around £15 million pounds for Daniel James. But reverting back what to what I said about Martial, I think he's still done well. And, you know, Man United made the correct decision at the beginning of the season by giving him that number nine shirt because he seems to be more effective in that uh, central uh, role. But, yeah, so I think Edison Cavani would be the right solution for Man United. Um, obviously, if we were to get him in, you know, we'd obviously have to pay a fee in this January transfer window. I do presume that we wouldn't offer him a long-term contract, you know, reflecting on that he's uh, 32 years of age. Obviously, Edison Cavani um, has never uh, played um, in the Premier League and that. So, obviously, he isn't uh, Premier League proven. So, you can say that's an element of concern. But he is um, a prolific goal scorer, is Edison uh, Cavani. So, yeah, so Man United um, are in for um, him. 
and you know Solskjaer was talking about short-term deals and you know obviously we'd only have him for a short period of time anywhere you know I don't think we'd be able to get him out on loan you know but he's even if, if he doesn't come to Manchester United or not either way he's going to be uh, leaving uh, PSG and that's uh, been uh, confirmed uh, today so that's uh, the latest uh, news uh, regarding him um, obviously there's been quite a few other strikers on our agenda I give you the news um, early on regarding uh, Raul Jimenez. Um, obviously, we've been in for Raul Jimenez, you know, for quite a few weeks now. Obviously, you know, when we played Wolves in the FA Cup um, at Molyneux, there was a lot of narratives coming out regarding Raul Jimenez. He did say, you know, that he could leave Wolves this month. You know, Nuno Santo even admitted himself that, you know, Raul Jimenez could leave this month. But actually, you no, know, my preference probably, probably would be Raul Jimenez over Edison Cavani. You know, because obviously, you know, Raul Jimenez is well Premier League proven. Uh, Raul Jimenez is around, is it four years younger than Edison Cavani or three and a half years? Because Raul Jimenez is around uh, 28 uh, years of age. But I think he's been a revelation for Wolves. You know, his hold-up play is very, very good. He tends to be very, very good um, in the air. And I think I'm very sceptical from now that he will spend the entirety of his career with Wolves, will have Raul Jimenez. He hasn't been there for several years, you know, this, you know, before he was on loan with Wolves, but reflected on how good he did when he was on loan with Wolves, Wolves decided to get him on a permanent transfer, and I think they paid around £30 million to get him on a permanent transfer. Um, I can't remember his contract, Raul Jimenez, I'm not too sure, I can't remember, but, you know, before he was at Wolves, he was at Benfica, Atletico Madrid, and he began his uh, youth uh, career um, in the, in um, America, did uh, Raul uh, Jimenez. And it's probably going to cost the club a substantial amount. Don't get me wrong, you know, Edison Cavani would be a much cheaper solution than Raul Jimenez because I think probably Raul Jimenez would cost us from between 60 to £65 million pounds or something like that. So he's another striker on our um, agenda. Don't forget, at one point, you know, Erling Haaland was our number one priority target. And he's um, a striker, but unfortunately, you know, we didn't get Erling Haaland uh, because obviously he joined Bushy Dortmund um, earlier on this month. Well, at the beginning of this month, he joined uh, Bushy Dortmund for around 17 or 18 million pounds. So it's a shame we didn't get him because, again, you know, he's um, a cheap solution. He was a cheap solution, was Erling Haaland. And I think it would have been, it, it would have been beneficial to recommend him into Man United, reflecting on what he did with Red Bull Salzburg. Plus, he's played under Ole Gunnar Solskjaer's guidance when he was younger. So, take that um, into um, account. So, there's quite a few uh, strikers um, on our uh, current um, agenda, definitely. You know, so, yeah. So, that's the latest uh, news uh, on that. I want to give you an update regarding Bruno Fernandes because a bit more additional um, information is updated about Bruno Fernandes now. Um, I've been reading the Daily Express today. Um, obviously, the Daily Express isn't a, a reliable article and that, but I saw it in the Daily Express and I've read a few other media outlets. And it did. It does now say that Manchester City are orchestrating on uh, hijacking our move for Bruno Fernandes. And reportedly, City are considering putting around an eighty-five or an eighty-six million pound bidding for him. And that don't forget, reflecting back last summer. Man City were closing in on the deal for Bruno Fernandes, but obviously, you know, City um, adopted him out um, of the race. But, you know, don't forget, Liverpool went in for him last summer. Also, Tottenham were in for him. But we was relentlessly, you know, linked with Bruno Fernandes last season. We was relentlessly, you know, linked with him uh, last summer. But I did give the couple of main explanations why we didn't get Bruno Fernandes last summer. is because Sporting has been turned around and said they wanted £70 million. We only valued him at around fifty million pounds, and I think you know Spurs put around the forty-five million pound bid in, but you know we didn't actually put an official bid in for Bruno Fernandez last summer. Now I don't know if Man United are now going to get Bruno Fernandez in this January transfer window. Obviously, you know we've identified him as our number one uh, priority target. We are seeing him as an adequate replacement for Paul Pogba, Bruno Fernandez, basically. And um, the Sporting Lisbon boss has recently, you know, come out and he's given his um, overarching view on it. And he's uh, confirmed that Bruno Fernandes um, it could be playing against Braga um, in Sporting Lisbon's League Cup semi-final tomorrow. Probably more than likely he will be playing because he has been included in the squad. But he did say regarding Bruno Fernandes, he deserves to play in the Premier League, reflecting on his good run of performances in Portugal. Now, it's been, confer it's been confirmed earlier on that he's been training with the rest of the Sporting Lisbon squad. And Sporting Lisbon now, I'm actually convinced he will not join Manchester United. 
because uh, you know Bruno Fernandez has obviously you know already notified Sport in Lisbon that he does obviously you know want her to leave. I think the main explanation is because his preferences are moved to Man United, and of course um, he wants to leave to uh, rejuvenate um, his career. Now, obviously, you know, there's been a lot more narratives that have been coming out about Bruno Fernandes since, like, the other week, you know, when the Sporting Lisbon president you know, and Bruno Fernandes' agent had travelled to London to hold negotiations with Manchester United and, obviously, you know, had negotiations with Ed Woodward. Obviously, Solskjaer and Mike Phelan had flown out to watch Bruno Fernandes on the 5th of January in Sporting Lisbon's game against uh, Porto. This is where what it um, had said. And, you know, it was looking very, very um, imminent, uh, the, the the reports that were coming out last week, you know, that we was going to sign Bruno Fernandes because it was coming out from Sky Sports, which is a reliable source. And they said, you know, Man United are close to signing him. He said we'd put an offer in of around £43 million up front with £17 million in potential add-ons. That obviously, you know, adds up to around uh, £60 million. But the stumbling block of Bruno Fernandes' Bruno Fernandes' proposed move to Manchester United is that, you know, Man United and Sport and Lisbon cannot come to an agreement on a fee. Uh, a lot of reports were stemming from the Portuguese press last week saying that, you know, Man United have agreed the personal terms with Bruno Fernandes and he's set to earn around £120,000 a week. But no fee has come to an agreement. You know, basically where Sport and Lisbon want more up front and we're not determined to meet that. The BBC came out uh, the weekend and they said, this was from Simon Stone, by the way. He says Man United's attempt to sign Bruno Fernandes is stalled because we're not um, willing to meet Sport and Lisbon's valuation. It got revealed how much Sport and Lisbon wanted, and it said they wanted around eighty million euros, which equates to around six to eight million in pounds sterling. Uh, but yes, he says we was not willing to meet that, and he says you know we was only willing to pay like forty odd million up front, and then it says there would be a series of add-ons included. And the warning would be activated if, like, we won the Premier League, the Champions League, or, you know, Bruno Fernandes won the Ballon d'Or, which is extremely um, unlikely her to happen. So, yeah. And Sporting Lisbon played Benfica last Friday. And, obviously, Bruno Fernandes played, and that should have been his farewell appearance for Sporting Lisbon. But we actually, you know, wanted to sign Bruno Fernandes before Sporting Lisbon played against Benfica. He, um, he should have been in the stands in the game, for the game against Liverpool yesterday, but he wasn't. You know, obviously we'd have had to have signed him uh, by 12 o'clock last Friday if he was to make his debut um, against Liverpool. But George Mendes has been working on this deal. You know, I credit George Mendes because he's been trying really, really hard. You know, he was at Old Trafford last Wednesday for the Wolves game. You know, he was in London, I think, um, last Tuesday was, you know, a George Mendes. So he's been working on the deal. But Bruno Fernandes is a very, very good player. He can score goals from that midfield. He can provide assists. He can create chances and he is uh, the age um, of 25, is Bruno Fernandes. So he's still got um, a lot of uh, years um, ahead of him. He's nearly um, in his prime now. You know, he got his contracts extended last season until 2023. I do presume that's reflecting on his good run, run of performances. And before he was um, at Sport in Lisbon, um, he was at, I think, San Pandoria on the knees. But so when he was basically younger, he spent the entirety of his career in Italy, did Bruno Fernandes. So... I'm still hopeful, you know, he can be our first signing in this January transfer window and I'm hopeful that he can be our fourth signing overall under the um, Ole Gunnar Solskjaer era. Uh, we uh, shall uh, see about that. So that's uh, the latest uh, news uh, regarding um, him. I've got some news uh, regarding uh, Jude Bellingham from uh, Birmingham. Now, I was reading, um, I think it was the Birmingham Mail today and they said um, that, you know... <laughs> Birmingham have reacted, you know, to Man United, you know, being linked to with Jude Bellingham. And it actually, you know, does uh, say that, you know, Birmingham, Birmingham, if he was to leave in this January window, he said Birmingham would want to keep Jude Bellingham on loan um, as part of uh, any deal. So they'd want to keep him, on, keep him on like an 18-month loan. Birmingham know how much of an imperative player he is. I don't think Jude Bellingham anywhere has got any intentions of leaving Birmingham. I think he's reluctant to uh, leave uh, Birmingham. But this is his first season in the senior squad with Birmingham. Don't forget he only made his senior debut at the age of 16 years and 38 days. And he made his senior debut back in August 2019. But he has been a revelation in the championship this season for Birmingham. You know, he's made 24 appearances so far this season. 
He scored in, I think, Birmingham's 1-1 draw with Cardiff at the weekend. Uh, the vast majority of the 24 games he's played, he has started. I think he started around uh, 18 M of those uh, games. But I think, you know, Birmingham wants to get him a professional contract this summer. Um because he's obviously he's obviously uh, seventeen um, in the summer, you know. Don't forget Jude Bellingham won the uh, what was it the EFL Young Player of the Year award, uh, EFL Young Player of the Month award. Sorry, back in November. I do presume that's reflecting on his uh, good uh, run um, of performances. You know, do you think though if he was to come at Man United or the Premier League, you know, do you think he'd have the minerals to you know succeed in the Premier League if he came? Do you think he'd be able to exceed expectations? Maybe not at this moment in time, he's not ready for the Premier League because he's um, only at the age of 16, but some players who come from the Championship to the Premier League can tend to do well, you know, sometimes. And, you know, a prime example with Daniel James, like I said, I know he's been poor for the last month or so, but I think, to be honest with you, um, you know, apart from the bad period he's had recently, I think he's done well for the vast majority of this season. He come from the Championship to uh, the Premier League and... You know, so players, some players who come from the Championship, you know, tend to do well in the Premier League. So, do you think you'd be happy if we got Jude Bellingham in? Reportedly, Man United have put around the £25 million bidding for Jude Bellingham. So, that's uh, the latest uh, news uh, regarding um, him. But, to be honest with you, I don't see uh, Man United uh, getting him. <clears throat> um, Obviously, as well, you know, we've got quite a few players, you know, that we could go in for um, in the summer as well. As well, you know, obviously, you know, James Madison from Leicester, Jack Grealish from Aston Villa, Declan Rice from West Ham. I think they're summer targets for uh, Man United. But I think we need two midfielders. We need an attacking midfielder. We also need a holding midfielder. Uh, we need to recruit a replacement for Ander Herrera as well because don't forget Ander Herrera left the football club last summer. You know, I don't think Solskjaer's got too many element of concerns about that full-back position uh, despite the fact that Ashley Young's just left. Um, because obviously, you know, Diego the lot's now back from injury. He sustained a few injuries injuries this season, so this is the main explanation why he hasn't really been playing. Uh, Fossil Mensah's now back. I think Solskjaer views Fossil Mensah as a full-back, even though he can play as a centre-half. He he was out with an injury since um, he was on loan with Fulham. And, um, you know, Brandon Williams has done really, really well at left-back. He's, he's a much better solution than Luke Shaw, I would say, now. He's Brandon Williams without um, a shadow um, of a doubt. So we've got a variety of full-backs in the team, so I don't really uh, think uh, Man United uh, need um, a full-back. All we need is basically two midfielders, a striker, and maybe we'll possibly uh, need um, a right uh, winner. But this year, it's very imperative that we do recruit the right calibre players to the football club. It's very, very imperative um, indeed that we do recruit the right players in that can get us back to being a competitive elite level football club and get us back up there, you know, challenging for major honours. You know, the question is, you know, when, when are Man United going to next win the league or when are Man United even going to mount any kind of title challenge up? I'm going to predict it now. I don't think we're going to win the league for several years. Maybe we could go another six, seven, maybe eight years without uh, winning uh, the title. Solskjaer did give us an update on our title ambitions and he knows obviously we're not good enough to win the league at the moment, but he did say it won't take Man United another 30 years to win another Premier League title. Of course, we haven't won the Premier League since 2013, so the last time we won it was in Alex Ferguson's last season. But obviously, you no, know, we've won uh, the most uh, Premier League titles because we've won 13 Premier Leagues. Seven old first divisions, so we have won twenty um all um in all. Uh, we've won a uh, twenty um all um in all and that so, and um, like I said, you know more signings are definitely nowhere needed um at Manchester United. I also do believe that more players need to leave the football club. I think we need to get rid of another six or seven more players this year, but I think we'll only consider getting rid of more players if signings uh, can be guaranteed in this January transfer window. You know, Young's obviously left. He's the first player to leave in 2020. You know, Jones needs to go. Rojo needs to go. Matic needs to go because I've got a limit of concerns about him. He's too slow. Uh, Jesse Lingard needs to go. He's been getting dropped, and I knew he'd start getting dropped. And like I said, reflects on his status at the football club and reflects on the number of years he's been. I think up until this point, Lingard spent the entirety of his career with Man United and don't get me wrong, he's had some good spells, but I think, you know, he's been so poor recently as Jesse Lingard. Uh, I know he's had a few injuries this season. He was also ill not too long ago. 
But we've got to get him out um, in the football club. I think we've also got to get Chon out. You know, Chon's not at that level yet. And I think Man United need to consider loaning Chon out. And, you know, some people are saying Luke Shaw needs to go. So there's still a lot of players that do need to uh, leave uh, Manchester United without um, a shadow um, of a doubt. Um, and I think in general anyway, we need to see a variety of changes at the football club. I think we need to get rid of our current board. Because uh, the due to our inconsistency, I think the vast majority of the blame stems from the board anywhere. You know, reflecting on their poor recruitment and their poor selection of managers. Um, so yeah, the board are definitely um, accountable. So we've got to get rid of our current board and recommend a new board in. We've got to get rid of Ed Woodward because quite clearly he's not reliable enough to oversee our transfer business. I know he was coming out last year saying that, you know, he's assured glad to go signings this year at Man, uh, this year at Man United and that. This is what, you know, um, Ed Woodward uh, did uh, say, and he's obviously still determined to back Solskjaer, is Ed Woodward. I think we need to get rid of our coaching staff here. We need to get rid of our coaching staff. We need a change of management, so we need to see a variety of changes um, at the football club, like I've said to you on numerous um, occasions. And we're definitely not going to be... We're getting nowhere under Solskjaer. We're not going to get our 21st title um, under um, Ole Gunnar Solskjaer, because quite clearly he isn't good enough for the football club. I've, I've, I've said to him an element of concerns regarding Solskjaer, you know, tactically naive for the vast majority of this season, um, has doesn't really um, have a plan B. And I just feel as though that he hasn't got any, any intuition on how to manage a big football club like Man United, despite the fact that he knows the traditions of the football club and all that. Because we know he was a long-serving player for Man United for 11 years. He flourished under Ferguson's guidance and that. But I just think as a manager... He's totally comparison to how he was as a player because as a player he had the he's got that proven pedigree, but as a manager he just hasn't got that Solskjaer. So I just don't think he's good enough uh, to succeed um, as a manager at Manchester United, and that's uh, my uh, perception um, on that. He just um, isn't uh, good enough for uh, the football club. So that's uh, my element of um, concerns uh, regarding him. And, you know, we need to uh, get rid of him. But like I've said, you know, on numerous occasions, our board are going to get rid of him at this moment in time. Our board are determined to back him in this January transfer window. They're also determined to back him in the summer transfer window. So they're going to give him a bit more time to see who he can recommend into the football club. Because there's only three players that are Ole Gunnar Solskjaer's at the moment. And that's Dan James, Anne Wambasaka and Harry Maguire, who, of course, he recommended into the football club last summer. Uh, obviously, you know, the vast majority of these players are Jose Mourinho's. You know, there's still players here from the Van Gaal era, there's still Matty here from the David Moyes era, and there's still some players here, well, not many, but there's still a couple of players here from the Alex Ferguson era, so take that um, into account. So Solskjaer is inheriting uh, the vast uh, majority of them. Vast majority um, of them, and that, don't forget. And, you know, Solskjaer watched... Some of this team at this day and age go and develop, you know, when he managed the Manchester United reserve team. I think he managed the reserve team for a couple of years, from 2008 to 2010. Solskjaer managed uh, the Manchester United uh, reserve team. But he's aware that he's been under intense pressure for the vast majority of this season due to our inconsistency. But not all of the blame uh, stems there uh, from him. So I just wanted to uh, remind you um, about that. Um, I think for Solskjaer, for my own perception, to be given another season at Man United, I think, you know, we need. he's got many expectations to exceed in his second year, don't get me wrong, but I think at the end of the season, we need to have got into that top four, because that top four is a priority for us, and that's a route to Champions League football for Man United, and a club of this stature, and, you know, reflects on the size and the potential of this club, we should be getting that top four this season at least. Um, also take into account the amount of money that's been invested into the football club over the years. And we are still in that top four race, surprisingly, because the only main explanation why we're in that top four race is because Chelsea have been in a bad vein of form. Chelsea lost at the weekend to Newcastle 1-0. We are five points behind their top four um, at the moment. But I think our aspirations is going to be that top four in the next couple of seasons anywhere because we're not good enough to win the league at the moment. So... Let's see uh, what happens. We need to get some silverware on the board this season. Solskjaer said before, didn't he? He was speak, speaking about the importance of us lifting silverware because we've lacked silverware in the last six if, in the last six or seven years. You know, we've only won three trophies since the Ferguson era, and that was the FA Cup under Louis Van Gaal era and the Europa League and League Cup in the Jose Mourinho era. 
and that came in Jose Mourinho's first season at the football club. So we need to get some silver around the board. You know, we could still win the Europa League. That's another route to Champions League football. We could win the FA Cup. I'd love us to win the FA Cup, or at least if we don't win it, enjoy a good FA Cup run. The good news is, you know, uh, we are into the fourth round of the competition. I'm very sceptical uh, that we will uh, win uh, the Cowbell Cup because we are 3-1 down from the first leg um, against uh, Man City. So we have still got uh, things uh, to uh, play for. You know, still got uh, things uh, to uh, play for. But, you know, looking at it, you know, Man United have had a lot of injuries this season and that's not been excusable for how inconsistent we've been. You know, it's not excusable at all. We're in that, you know, it's not. And obviously we've got a lot of young players in the squad that are developing and trying to improve in that. But we have had a lot of injuries this season, you know. Obviously, probably at Tom way out. I think they're out until the end of this month or until early February. You know, pobber has got an ankle injury. Matt Tomway has damaged the ligaments in his knee. I thought I think Matt Tomway has been a revelation this season. Obviously, you know, before he sustained uh, that um, injury, um, it's quite severe. Matt Tomway's injury. You know, the good news is Bay is now back because he was out with any injury. Um, he's now back though because he's been playing in, in the under twenty three just like Foster Mensa. Uh, Luke Charles has come back from a hamstring problem. You know, Rashford's now out. You know, so we've had um, a lot of um, injuries uh, this season. But like I've just said, <coughs> that is uh, not um, excusable. But Solskjaer recently said, for us to find that consistency, uh, if we do find that consistency, we will uh, finish um, in that uh, top four. And I did say at the start of this season, I expected us to enjoy a better season this season than what we saw last season. Because last season, we finished sixth last season. You know... The lowest we finished in the Premier League era was back under David Moyes when we finished seventh. So take that into account. Solskjaer's been at the football club now for 13 months. So he's been here over a year. He expects Man United to enjoy a better year this year than what we saw last year. But he's aware that it's a transition period for Man United. So he's hopeful that we can get through this transition period. He's very, very hopeful of that. But Solskjaer's been permanent manager now for almost 10 months. And analysing the vast majority of that 10-month period, he has endured a really uh, difficult uh, time. Uh, definitely, he's endured a really uh, difficult uh, time. He has endured a really, really um, difficult uh, time. But I think one of the mistakes the club did make was giving him the job. You know, obviously he's got around two and a half years left on his deal as Solskjaer. So let's see what he can do in in these two and a half years he's got left. But I'm actually, you know, very, very sceptical anyway. He'll see out the, the remainder of his contracts at the club because he did sign a three-year contract when he got the job back in March, uh, back in March of last year. He's on around £7.5 million a year at Man United. But as you all know, it's going to cost the club money to get rid of him. We'll, we'll have to pay around £5 million to get rid um, of Solskjaer. But I think he'll be gone at the end of the season if we're not in the position that we should be in. I think he definitely will be gone. And I think, you know, our next manager will be Mauricio Pochettino. Definitely. It's looking very him. He will be if Solskjaer um, is going to be uh, sat. We've already sat three managers since the Alex Ferguson era. Moyes went, Van Gaal went and Jose Mourinho went. But we've just got to accept the fact we'll never be the team that was under Ferguson. We'll never will be the team that was under Ferguson. So Solskjaer won't invoke Ferguson's legacy at the club. Uh, I don't think any other manager will invoke Ferguson's legacy at the football club. So, take that home into um, account. And, like I said, we've come, got Burnley coming up on Wednesday, quarter past eight kickoff. That's a game we should be winning at Old Trafford. I won't take um, all for granted, though. We should win it, but I won't take all for granted. But we need to see a total comparison performance uh, to what we saw um, in the game against uh, Liverpool uh, yesterday. Because I thought Solskjaer's team selection was totally wrong yesterday. I I said on my video today what he got wrong. Should have started Greenwood, didn't. Should have started Matt, didn't. Brandon Williams should not have been playing on the left wing. I think he should have started at left back and Luke Shaw should have been dropped. So, yeah, so some of his decision making is definitely a uh, question, Bill. Um, his Solskjaer is without um, a shadow um, of a doubt. But Solskjaer, you know, was saying that, you know, Liverpool are, are, are going to be only the greatest team in England if they can win back to back titles. And he's obviously, you know, made a comparison between Liverpool's team at this day and age to the team we had under Ferguson. So what he's saying is Liverpool's team is nowhere near as good as the team we had under Ferguson as yet. So, um, yeah. So there'll be more videos coming up, uh, I do presume, tomorrow. Your Burnley preview will be uh, coming up tomorrow sometime. 
so yeah, so drop your comments, likes below on the channel, guys. If you do, consider subscribe as always, and take care. God bless, and I'll see you all again very soon. Thanks for watching.